Hello, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If you've been watching the channel, you know we're right in the middle of a catamaran review series that we took at this year's Annapolis Sailboat Show. Every episode is going to be about just one catamaran and some companies like the Nizna only had one catamaran at the show, so we did that one on its own. And then we moved on to the Lagoons, from the smallest all the way up to the biggest that we would consider, which is the 50. And now we're going on to a totally new builder, Fontaine Pajot, again, another production builder. And they had a bunch of models there. They had a 40 foot, a 42 foot, a 47 foot, and a 58 foot. Well, clearly the 58 was way, way, way too big for us to consider as a liveaboard catamaran for just the two of us. So that one we didn't bother filming, but we will be doing the 40, the 42, and the 47. This episode will be the 40. So hopefully you stay tuned for that. And I know a few have been asking, why are we going to the Annapolis Sailboat Show every year to look at brand new catamaran? brands when we're not looking to buy for four or five years when I retire. Well, the reality of that is that we do plan to buy used so that we don't get whacked with that depreciation right out the door. But the brand new boats that are at the show now will be that perfectly aged used boat, a four to five year old boat, when we're ready to buy. So that's why we're looking at the brand new boats now. And while we're on the topic, let's talk about depreciation on a boat. Now, I couldn't find a graph online about boats, but I got this one on cars. And needless to say, cars never stop depreciating because they're made of steel, they rust out, they start to look like crap. Nobody wants them after a while, so they're eventually worth nothing. But with a boat, the depreciation is less because it's made of fiberglass. Eventually, it almost plateaus where it stops depreciating as long as you keep maintaining and upgrading your boat as things slowly break. But still, as you can see from this thing, cars depreciate 50 to 70% in the first five years. It's probably less for boats, but still, a lot of the depreciation of a boat happens in those first five years. So if you buy a five-year-old catamaran versus a new catamaran, you'll probably save you yourself a ton of money. The first couple of episodes, I didn't mention price on these catamarans because I was afraid to mislead anybody. And yet I got a lot of people in the comments asking how much these boats cost. So I'll do a little legwork for you. It's hard for me to know for sure because everybody who's gonna try and live aboard a catamaran is gonna need to add extra items on to what comes from the factory, which is nothing. So you're gonna need generators, you're gonna need water makers, you're gonna need solar, you're gonna need probably wind generation. You're gonna need better batteries probably than what they give you standard. All of that is gonna cost you quite a bit of money. And it depends on the level or quality of each one of these options as to how much more money it's gonna cost you. But just because everybody wants to know a price, let's go to Yacht World and see what these boats cost. And as you can see, a brand new 2019 Lucia 40 goes for 517,000 and they say fully kitted out, but that don't believe that. There's still gonna be more things you're gonna to need to add. And then a one year old one or, or so, one or two year old is about 418. Again, you're gonna to need to add some stuff onto that. But there you go. You see, there's quite a bit of almost $100,000 depreciation after only being one or two years old. Now, can you imagine the savings on a five year old catamaran? Now, keep in mind, five years are gonna have more use than abuse. We highly suggest you get an owner's version. An owner's version of a catamaran is a three cabin version instead of a four cabin. A three cabin version was probably bought by somebody who plans to live on it themselves. And somebody who's been living on their own cat has probably meticulously taken care of it and cleaned it and babied it. As opposed to that same boat if it's been put in the charter industry where everybody who comes every week is there to party their butt off, drive it like they stole it, and generally don't care about the boat, that boat will show a lot more wear and tear in the same amount of years. Now that you know what we're looking for in the future liveaboard catamaran, let's check out the smallest of the Fontaine Pajots, the Lucia 40. We're starting uh, the Fontaine Pajos now. We're going to start with the Lucia 40. <laughs> Good you. So one little note so far is that they have the flush patches, smooth, non-toe stubbing, except for the one at the very front. But a lot of space on this pass-through. Hand holds. Yeah, a little. Blasberry, I guess. An all right sized princess seat there, but there's no forward handle to hold on to. Good big seating area. The windows are pretty big, though they're not as uh, open and as unobstructed as the lagoon windows. It's also a, a smaller trampoline surface, and it has the ropes instead of the plastic mesh. So this is a sport, which is what we would go with. Still, some very big, ample windows. This is really easy to walk across here. It's super flat with no obstructions. Back here they have some solar panels. They look just like the ones we have right now on our Benito. It has a very adequate swim ladder. 
the one that we had on our charter was basically useless. It was so small. Good wide sugar scoop. So this back deck area is very good. It's very open. It has a little sitting area back here, a beautiful wooden table. I mean, the layouts are very similar from boat to boat. But Craig is sitting on the lovely settee area behind the helm. Uh, but there you go. <laughs> the steps to the sport helm. This is comfortable. The view is good up here. There's an access staircase to the boom. It's not a hard bimini, but there is a bimini. There is the outdoor dining area. Very similar table, but it's still good. Ample room. Through the grand opening we go. Big sliding door opening here. The layout already is pretty convenient. It's got the freezer fridges right here. The galley has two sinks as well as a handy hole for waste. So this is good. Um, something the lagoons should be doing. The countertop is nice. I prefer a U-shape, but uh, the way things are laid out in here is pretty good. Instead of the oven down here under the stove top, it's over here in the side wall, but that works. The stove top's a little small, but the stove is small. So the, there's uh, ledges everywhere, lots of places to put things. Where they have put the nav station is almost my favorite position. It's at least semi-facing forward. So there's the we're internal in the, view of the windows. In the we're in the market. Department. So they're pretty yeah. open okay. and ample. And they're 40 foot about the right There's time. a lot of, there's these, um, these well, I'll, I'll structures I'll in between, so they're not all the way around, but like, 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 like the lagoon. There's a, a ceiling. Yeah. Oh, you want to slide this way first then? Oh, yes. Oh, you're going to be on TV? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> this is a lovely sitting area, and this, this table obviously, this table obviously would would raise, and uh, the leaves would flip out, and it would become a much larger dining table. There's lots of room to put stuff back behind the sitting area as well. Down the little companion way. Here is the forward berth. That's pretty cute. It's bright. It's got a good-sized window. And even though it is a small berth, it does have its own dedicated head. Though not a separate shower. The shower head would detach and become, or sorry, the faucet would detach and become a shower head. But still, it's cute. It's good bookshelves over here. And a small closet here. Not really much of a closet. Here's the aft cabin. And the bed is accessible on both sides. There are some big windows, so that's good. But the um, the head is quite small, but it is a small boat. There's an you know, the extra couple feet to work with. It's got the faucet slash shower head as well. But it's still very nice and open feeling and cute. Down to the owner's cabin we go. That was pretty good closet. Mm -hmm. so this is the owner's version. It's got a, seating, a sitting area, desk, dressing table. The bed is a good size again and accessible on both sides. The same as the aft berth on the other side. The closet here. A full size closet here. So here is a water closet. It is just a toilet in there. And then the rest of the head over here. The shower sink. Mm. Good sized linen covered. It, the shower is also a very good size. It's bright in here, it's got a hatch. The counter and sink is very cute. 
cute. It's a nice large basin. Welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. We are now covering Fontaine Pajot's. And the first boat we went on was the smallest one they have here at the show. It's Lucia 40 foot. What did you think, Janice? It was pretty cute. It yeah. was nice. <laughs> That's it. So just like the lagoons on our first one where we did the 38 and then the 40, this size is probably a little too small for us yeah. to consider a full-time liveaboard catamaran, but yeah. definitely well worth it to somebody who's having this as like not their full-time liveaboard residence, but somewhere they go to vacation. Or, mm -hmm. or if they want to put it in a charter, that's fine too. But if you're going to live with everything you own on a boat, it's probably got to be bigger than 40 feet. But it did have yeah. some nice features. No, it did. It's, it's got a big outdoor cockpit. Front, the flush hatches. The cockpit is gorgeous. The layout of the interior is very good. The uh, mast station is almost in my preferred position. Um, it's not a U-shaped galley, but boats this size aren't going to have a U-shaped galley. Uh, it had two sinks, which is a big boat. On a small boat, which is nice. Yeah. And um, the master cabin was really nice. Yeah, the, the head down there had its own separate water closet and uh, a really nice sink. and. The two, the two uh, rooms on the other side, though, don't have separate shower. Neither of those heads have a separate shower. They're both the stand over your toilet shower heads. Yeah. Stand over your toilet. Yeah. So that's just because yeah. it is a small. Yeah, it's a small boat. So the next one we're going on to is the. Pause for a moment. Estrella 42. So that's the next size up, and then we're going to do a Sayona 47, and finally a Ipanema, Ipanema 58. 58, which we've been on. It's just almost not worth it's filming. It's crazy much big. So, space. anyways. On to the next one. We really did like this Lucia 40. The cabin seemed big enough and the outdoor seating area was plenty big enough, but unfortunately there's just not enough storage to house everything we'd own for the rest of our life on this boat. So we need to go up to a 42 or a 47. Those are in the next two episodes. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If so, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button beside it so that you're notified when the next episode is up. There are tons and tons of catamarans in the future. Some of them I'm showing you on the screen right now. Some of note is we really like the Majestic 530, we like the Maverick 400, and we like the Exquisite X5, but there are plenty of other boats we like as well. So hopefully you stay tuned for that. So until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.